Different missions require different skill sets, and the Autobots have had many groups of crack elite commandos over the course of their generation-spanning war. They've also had some useless ones. And in this vid, I'm going to look at groups that have created their own universes, groups that took down war criminals, saved the lives of countless innocents, groups that got super chad hench, and groups that fangirled like no bots have fangirled before. This is a list of all of the Autobot factions. I want to say all of the Autobot factions ever, but I just don't know if that's realistic. But even if I've missed a couple, this is a hell of a video, guys. So please make sure to hit like and why not subscribe? And you know what? Let's play a little game. Get in the comments and let me know who you would pick to make up the most powerful Autobot subgroup, but you're not allowed Optimus. And I'll talk about my lineup in a members video. Right, where else would you start a video like this than with the Combaticons? Now, yes, I know before you get on your keyboards and all like- <laughs> They actually started out as Autobots in the Wings universe, and they were a special ops unit part of the Elite Guard. It was put together by Magnum. Basically, that continuity's version of Ultra Magnus, with the aim of eliminating the leadership structure of the Decepticon faction in the early days of the war, hoping to bring the war to a swift conclusion. Unfortunately, Death Yeah, he captured them and then sweet, sweet talked them into switching sides. You want to join my team, baby? Okay, as long as it's not evil. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> do what I tell you to do! And gave them the ability to combine to form the nightmare that is Bruticus. Then, they turned on their former comrades, the Elite Guard, slaughtering them in numbers. The Wreckers. These guys are an elite strike force often called in to fight when the odds of success are slim or non-existent even. They're kind of like the Dirty Dozen, like a Suicide Squad type thing, handpicked from the toughest and best warriors. But that doesn't mean that they're kind of like these James Bond sort of immortal characters who can't die. Oh, no, 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 no. They burn through members at an astonishing rate. If you're a Transformers Prime fan, you'll know that Ultra Magnus was the leader, with other members, including Bulkhead and Wheeljack. But the Autobot that I most associate with the Wreckers would be Springer who came to lead the group after certain <coughs> events involving the previous leader, Impactor. Cup is another famous member, and in the Beast Wars continuity, Ape Link and Primal Prime also wore the patch. IDW had them being founded by a bot called Threnody many eons ago with another bot called Valve. Remember that name. And the earliest lineup that we got to see of them was the 11th iteration, and consisted of Hyperion, Valve, Impactor, Piston, and Rack. And Ruin, obviously, because they were conjoined. You're not really getting one without the <laughs> And they were led by a bot called Crest. Don't know what happened to Crest, but the rumor is that he was decapitated by Black Shadow, but he was succeeded by Hyperion. And when he stepped down, he was replaced by Impactor, who became the longest serving and surviving leader of the team. But Valve, remember I said he was one of the founding members? Well, he would defect to the Decepticons and become a leader of the feared Squadron X. And you know what? For all my searching, I cannot find a reason why. I really want to know why he would have done that. But you know what? We'll talk about Squadron X and this defection in the Decepticon version of this video. Anyway, the Wreckers definitely need discussing in more detail. So I'll probably put together a video just on them at some point in the future. But my personal favorite was their mission to take down the vicious Overlord. Other notable members include Whirl, who was responsible for the deaths of Wheel Arch and Spring Arm, Roadbuster, who killed a bunch of his own trainees, Impactor clearly wasn't sure I've taken a few scalps, Perceptor, I don't know, who did he kill? <laughs> I have to look into that. Let's move on. Made up of twin-headed dragon double cross, whatever repugnus is meant to be, and uh, uh... Grotusque. The Monster Bots are a group that haven't had enough of the limelight. First appearing in the Marvel comics, where Fortress Maximus led a group of Autobots away from the war to search for a peaceful life on planet Nebulos, that was until Scorponok and his forces were like, no, no, peace for your f and unleashed all of his headmaster powers on them, overwhelming them and forcing them to retreat. They were later seen coming to the rescue of Grimlock and the other Dinobots in the IDW continuity where they were portrayed as outcasts, willing to do nasty, brutish missions for money, 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 rather than belief in the cause. Like this guy had apparently been in Garrus 9 prison for unspecified crimes. Anyway, when Grimlock and co were about to get swamped in Sunstreaker clones, Repugnus, Grotusk and Double Cross came to the rescue. These guys are foul mouthed. Where are Heavy drinking, insubordinate, but they are very effective. The Lightning Strike Coalition was one of the factions that emerged in the aftermath of Optimus and Megatron disappearing in the Dreamwave continuity. The war had simmered down and the Autobots and Decepticons splintered into various sub-factions that would skirmish over Energon and stuff like that. The Lightning Strike Coalition was a commando unit that would retaliate and retaliate hard against Predacon assets and bases. And it was made up of Grimlock, Wheeljack, Ironhide, Smokescreen, Inferno, Slag, Sludge, Swoop and Snarl. But their methods ran them afoul of Ultra Magnus, who took control of the unit, prompting Grimlock to form the Dinobots. The 
Dinobots really need no introduction, do they? Described as a demolition commando squad, their main lineup was Snarl the Stegosaurus, who's the analyst of the group, Sludge, who's the logistics guy, Slug the Triceratops and tactician of the group, Swoop the scout specializing in aerial recon, and Grimlock, the ferocious leader often portrayed as a dumb brute, but is actually a lot smarter than you might think. There's also been Scarstrafe slash Grimmaster and Paddles. But no matter the lineup, this is a group that comes in to inflict maximum damage when the time for subtlety is long since past. Their methods, as the most devastatingly powerful combat unit in the Autobot army, has meant that they've garnered a reputation that means that a lot of Autobots would rather just avoid them altogether, but that has meant that they are incredibly close to each other. They once combined into a creature called the Beast, but everyone kind of pretends that never happened now, and they've replaced it with the honestly much better Volcanicus. Weirdly enough, the Dinobots in Transformers Animated started out as animatronics in a theme park until the AllSpark key gave them life. There's only three of them too, Grimlock, Swoop and Snarl, so no sludge. Age of Extinction gave us Scorn, who I don't remember seeing anywhere else. Also Strafe, which was a Pteranodon with two heads. The Bayverse also gave us Dinobot Babies! Ugh, so who remembers the mini Dinobots from last night? Yep, they were called Sharp T, basically mini Grimlock, P Terry, mini Strafe, and Tops, which was a mini version of Slug. These guys were seen in K. Jaeger's trailer in the last night. And he'd trained one to go and open the fridge and fetch product placements and was in the middle of potty training, well, fire training, a uh, little Grimlock to stop him setting fire to the curtains. And it was actually a quality movie. It turned out to be the trees. And as cute as these guys were, no explanation was ever offered for them. Like, we know that the larger Dinobots dug tunnels and only came out to feed, but nobody got no clue how to explain these. I think my favorite incarnation of the Dinobots, though, were the Fall of Cybertron ones. I've recently played through the Cybertron games again. I just haven't got around to posting all the videos on my gaming channel yet. But I did get curious about what happened to the Dinobots after Fall of Cybertron. If you remember, Grimlock sacrificed his life and disappeared into that huge explosion. And of course, he's not in Transformers Prime. So it's like, did Grimlock die here? But I found this comic that was set after Fall of Cybertron and between seasons two and three of Prime. And Grimlock's here, so yay, he survived the explosion. How? Here, look at the monkey. Look at the silly monkey. <laughs> It's not explained. Apparently it is later in a Beast Hunters comic. All the same, this is a pretty good comic. And it sees the Dinobots having to rescue Ultra Magnus from the evil Predacon known as Sir Cat. This one does have some awesome panels of Grimlock fighting Sir Cat and later Grimlock fighting Shockwave. And Shockwave even gets ripped limb from limb at one point. Like each Dinobot grabs a different limb and then... Uh. <laughs> the follow-up comic is the one I mentioned at the start that begins with Grimlock in charge of Cybertron. Like he's got his own throne and everything. While Optimus and Megatron are on Earth doing Transformers Prime stuff. There's this killer on the loose, and upon investigating, the Dinobots come across Kickback and a few of the other Insecticons. Now, I love the Insecticons from Prime. They were the best portrayal of the Insecticons ever, in my opinion. But there's not much of a battle here, with the Dinobots going off to find Shockwave's lab, where they find that he was cloning a bunch of real dinosaurs. So the Dinobots have to face those guys, then they come up against a Transformers Prime Predacon. Another dream matchup. And that turns out to be the climactic battle. The Predacon swats Sludge like a fly before taking everything the Dinobots have got to throw at it. But luckily, RC, Bulkhead and Bumblebee show up to provide some extra plot armor. And this enables them to split into three groups and lure the beast into a Decepticon bunker, which they then collapse upside its head, trapping it and weirdly, it's Grimlock who doesn't want to kill it. Quick 15 second interlude to say a massive thank you for 60,000 subscribers when I think about where we were this time last year, mind blown. Also huge shout out to anyone who's become a member, especially amazing because there's not a lot of content on there right now, but your support will not be forgotten. Thank you guys. Right, everybody back to work. The Terrans came into being when the energy of Quintus Prime's Emberstone was released by these two kids. That's how scary movies start. Created from cave water, their molecular structure is part organic, part mechanical, even powering themselves with emberstone energy infused water, and not Energon. The two originals were Twitch and Thrash, but they were soon followed by Hashtag, Jawbreaker, and Nightshade. Bizarrely, the emberstone also created these sleeves worn by the human kids that would allow the bots and kids to share emotions. For example, at one point it turned out that the Terrans needed to feel safe in order to transform. Yeah, I know. And, you know, the kids helped them. The Powered Masters from Zoo were originally built by Megatron and given powered engines, which would allow them to travel huge distances across the universe to set up energon producing colonies. But once they learned of the Decepticons' nefarious intentions, they turned coat, stole a bunch of Decepticon ships, and started evacuating non combatants to a safe planet before switching sigils to the Autobots and getting Prime all up on the blower. In the cartoon, they rescued Star Saber from the nine great demon generals before destroying Trypticon <laughs> Devastator. 
King Poseidon and Breda King. Has he got an organic brain? Ooh. These guys were Sonic Bomber, Roadfire, and Die Atlas, who could all combine together to form Big Powered. And then there were different combinations. For example, Die Atlas with Sonic Bomber made up Sky Powered, and Die Atlas with Roadfire made up Land Powered. Also from Zone was the Battle Patrol Team, Micromaster's Gunlift, who was an artillery cannon, Powerbomb, who was a multi-missile launcher, Sidetrack, who was an anti-aircraft tank, and Sunrunner, who was a plane. And these guys managed to beat Bruticus and then fought valiantly against the nine demon generals, but got into trouble and needed bailing out by Die Atlas. Now I think all this took place in the manga because it's pretty hard to find, it's definitely not in the cartoon. If you don't know, they only made one episode of Zone, which is a real shame because from what I saw, I mean it was in Japanese, so I don't quite understand what was going on. What I saw, it was pretty good. The Battle Stars were a unit put together by Die Atlas in the Return of Convoy continuity as a response to the growing powers of Decepticon Dark Nova. They found the body of Prime and brought him back to life as Star Convoy. Then there was his second in command, Sky Gary, who had a mystery circle punch. Six Liner was in here, and Grandus, who was the base for all the goddamn Micromasters in this show. They love their Micromasters. Another interesting one is the Circle of Light. These guys, led by Die Atlas, didn't choose either Autobot or Decepticon faction, but considered themselves to be the guardians of Cybertron's ancient culture. So many were scientists and scholars, and they headed off into space to live in peace, hoping to leave the brutalities of the war far, far behind them. They built an underground city on a planet called Theophany in an attempt to hide their civilization, but when lockdown tracked them down, Die Atlas had to reconsider his stance on the war. And a few of their warriors, who although pacifists would train regularly with great swords, which were swords powered by the bearer's very spark, would fight with Lockdown's crew until they were driven away. Eventually, another member of the Circle, a certain Star Saber, would betray the Circle of Light, leading to many of the members being used for Chief Justice Tyrest's experiments to build a universal kill switch, which was exactly what it sounds like. And Die Atlas was eventually killed by Star Saber. Eventually, though, the forces of Tyrest were beaten, and many of the Circle's survivors settled on one of Cybertron's moons, where they kept watch over Tyrest until he disappeared, but that's another story. And get this, it turned out to be the trees killing everybody. <laughs> the Guardian Knights, or Knights of Iacon, were the band of Cybertronians that rose up against Quintessa and stole her staff, bringing it to Earth, which in this continuity is actually Unicron. So I can't remember what their plan actually was. What was their plan here? Were they gonna reawaken Unicron? Anyway, but whatever it was, they decide to give the staff to this drunk. Remember me? Oh, I'm sozzled. Which might not seem to make a whole lot of sense, but they did it to help King Arthur, of course, uniting with him against his enemies by combining into the mighty Dragonstorm before moving their ship to the bottom of the Atlantic and going into stasis. When the bot known as the Talisman Knight came to Earth in search of his brothers, he got shot down, but not before managing to give this dude a, a thing, and you know the story. The knights weren't named in the movie, but they've come to be known as Skulletron, Stormrain, Steelbane, and Dragonicus. Dragonicus. Dragon. Drag, drag. I'm having trouble. There were actually 12 of these, but you know, these are the ones that were most featured. I almost put the Knights of Cybertron on here too, but because they were around before the Civil War and the formation of the Autobots and the Decepticons, I'm not sure they qualify. Disqualified. Right, let's speed run the governmental bodies real quick. Autobot High Command pops up real often, which then evolved into the Primal Council, who were put in position after the death of Optimus in the IDW continuity. Then you had the Council of Ancients from the Dreamwave line, Scary Scary Ancients, and the Council of Autobot Elders, not to be confused with the Council of Peers. There was the Dynasty of Primes, the Chorus of Primes, the, the Council, Council of Peers, Peers what? the Minicon Council of Sages, the Botropolis High Council, the Maximal High Council. There's also been loads of police forces. Let's go! There was the Cybertronian Secret Police, Cybertronian Security Force, which included these very cool guys called the Badgeless, the Elite Guard, the Cybertronian Civil Defense, Cybertronian Intelligence, Cybertronian Police Defense Command. Where the f is my microphone? How did I lose my microphone? It's a dildo-shaped thing on the end of a big stick. How the f do you lose it? Oh, it's there. Come here, you. We had the Advanced Observation Unit, which was a part of the Autobot Guard, Special Operations, Zero Unit, and the Primal Vanguard. They were apparently integral to the reintroduction of gender on Cybertron, but they, the Primal Vanguard, should not be confused with the Primus Vanguard. I, 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 I saw. They, the Primus Vanguard, were a group of primes and convoys put together by the almighty big bollocks Primus himself to protect the seven star powers that if brought together would allow the bearer to, the ability to reshape the universe as they saw fit. Each of this group led their own order. White Gallant Convoy had the white group, the green order led by green tender convoy, red sentinel prime led the red order, yellow splendid prime led the splendids, probably, black girl, Prime led the Goths, 
Probably. And the purple wicked convoy led the Nurples. Probably. Who did the cat lead? The convoy group was another multiversal group of primes, this time from the Transtech continuity. Leo Convoy was in there, General Optimus Prime, Convoy Scourge, Bendy Bus Prime? As with all things multiversal, this thing got pretty mind frying and complicated, so it's probably best left for another time. Bumblebee had his own faction at one point. Well, Goldbug did. That was his rebuilt form. In some continuities. In other continuities, there were two separate bots. Continuity confusion! Anyway, the throttle bot. There was Chase, a red testerosa. Freeway, with an F. Rollbar was a Jeep. Searchlight was some whatever the hell he was. Wide load, which was a dump truck. And once, a throttle bot called throttle bot. And what kind of car was he, you ask? He was and he was a helicopter. Ah! These guys defining attribute was speed. And as such, were often given roles such as scouts, couriers, and saboteurs. They started out as a guerrilla unit targeting Decepticon fuel depots until they were captured by Ratbat who sent them in to deal with a scraplet invasion because he knew it was almost certain death and didn't want to waste his own troops. They were later captured by a human outfit called the Triple I who dissected and interrogated and crushed them. Optimus saved them and gave them new, more powerful bodies in the hope that they'd stand a chance against Starscream, but they didn't. They got infected with the hate plague in the G1 cartoon, and then they had to hold off the mighty six shot from capturing a base in one of IDW's comics. They were saved by Metroplex though, who injured Six Shot before leaving. What? Yeah, Metroplex left them a shuttle before going on about his merry little way. Of course, Six Shot wasn't dead and attacked the shuttle, forcing the four remaining Throttlebots to crash and become stranded on a planet called Botanica. Sounds planty. And they would have died there if not for a passing ship who didn't save them, but attacked them, killing Searchlight. But the battle was picked up by Prowl and his guys, and they were rescued. Transformers animated Cyber Ninja Corps is broadly divided into categories. Swordsmen, boxers, sumo, and martial art specialists with a mission to protect the Autobots' most precious secrets and strategic assets. It's a mysterious clan, or brotherhood maybe is a better way to put it, who train in a Cyber Ninja Dojo and whose ranks include Jazz, Lockdown, Prowl, Diatlas, Star Saber, and Ultra Magnus. Some pretty heavy hitters in there. Remember this moment from Transformers Prime? Well, this was Delta Team, RC's team before joining Team Prime on Earth, and the team that saw the death of her partner Tailgate at the hands of Arachnid. She'd obviously been with Delta Team for quite a while, as she mentioned that one of their previous missions was to stop one of Shockwave's, you know, crazy plans with a space bridge or something. Transformers Prime also had the Stealth Team, which was RC, Bumblebee, and Smokescreen. I think RC was meant to be the leader of this one, and their most notable mission was to secure the Omega Lock. The Made to Orders, or MTOs, are interesting ones. Sparks taken from a stockpile and built by Autobot or Deception. Decepticon command when troop numbers needed boosting. The Decepticons would sometimes even murder captured Autobot soldiers and reuse their materials to build more of these guys. Cruelly, they were seen as cannon fodder and were often thrown into battles with only combat training loaded into their consciousness, and Skids once joked that they had a life expectancy of only three minutes. The most famous of these would probably be Getaway, I reckon, who I spoke about plenty in my worst deeds of the Autobots vids, but also Ambulon was an MTO, Riptide, Scattergun, and Biteback were too. Hydrobot specialized in underwater ops, with some of their members being triple changers. Aquabat, who could turn into both a hovercraft and a bat. Whoa. Riptide, who turned into this kind of catamaran. And Crest, who I'm not sure we ever found out what he transformed into. As well as Aquastar and Wave Rider, who could transform into a submarine, but, and also was a pretender, so had a human form too. Hound had his own crew in the super robot lifeform Transformers manga called the Four Wheel Drive Corps who all had off-road vehicles as their alt modes. These guys could combine all of their firepower into what they called the four-wheel drive combination scrum buster, and they chased off the pesky insecticons with it. Anyway, it was a group made up of Beachcomber, Trailbreaker, Swerve, Outback, and of course Hound. In Transformers Cybertron, after Hotshot, Red Alert, and Scattershot got slashed by Megatron's death machine gun in their first appearance, they were rebuilt and given more powerful bodies by Primus Magic and formed a group called the Cybertron Defense Team. They took their new armaments to get cold revenge, not just on Megatron, but on Scourge too, just to show off. <laughs> so remember that ep in G1 where Megatron built a bot called a Robo Smasher? Yeah, well that. That was seen getting tentacly with this guy who was never named in the show, but in the Transformers Collector's Club magazine, they gave him a whole backstory. He was one of the Gyronian sentries, and I'm, I'm not sure what that's meant to be or do, but it stated that an Autobot wishing to join them has to give up their identity as a show of loyalty. They wield what's called a suspension phaser that seizes up an enemy's internal workings. A jump starter is a faction of two. 
twins, Top Spin and Twin Twist, who were also part of the Wreckers and who also created a whole new universe, which I think is supposed to be the Legends World universe. This universe where the Transformers are just these little cutesy versions of themselves and live the lives of normal average humans. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Apparently, Top Spin and Twin Twist died somewhere in the Marvel comics as well as in the IDW comics, where Twin Twist was tortured to death by Stalker and Top Spin donated his spark and sacrificed his life for a good cause. Another faction of two were the Duobots, shot and awe from IDW 2005. Autobot twins who were indistinguishable from one another until one got fused into an engine and the other was eaten by a creature who pulled his spark out through his mouth and then ate it. You want a tasty Micro Master? Nice, tasty. How about we speed run some Micro Masters? We had the Race Car Patrol, the Monster Truck Patrol, who helped the Hot Rod Patrol save Roadbuster, while the Off Road Patrol had to save the Battle Patrol, who were this group of bots that would transform into artillery and, and missile launchers and stuff. Apparently, they were pretty brutal for Autobots. We had the Heroic Metro Squad, who would. We had the Rescue Patrol that rescued your ass, the Construction Patrol that would build your ass. The Astro Squad explored space, nothing to do with your ass though. The train team combined into Six Train, who could go full red mode, which enhanced their strength and combatability to near dangerous level. He had a brother called Six Liner made up of the Liner team, who even though he was the youngest sibling, he became the leader of the Micro Masters on Earth. Also in Transformers Victory, serving under the Brain Masters was the Rescue Patrol team. They were the Micro Masters Bota, Fire, Bipo, and Holly. The Supercar Patrol team were another one from Zoom. Apparently they were computer experts and they designed Zone City, which was a moon base. They were Black Heat, Dead Hour, Roadhugger, and Gingham style. Nope, just Gingham. There was also Team Bullet Train from 2001 Robots in Disguise. Rapid Gun was physically the strongest member of the team. Midnight Express, who was kind of fussy and got his knickers in a twist a lot. And then there was their leader, Rail Spike, who according to Ask Vector Prime in another branch of the multiverse was brainwashed by the Robo Smasher and reformatted into Astro Train. It's crazy. Of course, these guys would combine into Rail Racer. Train to get to <laughs> The train bots were from the Japanese G1 continuity and formed up of Shouki, Getsuai, Yukikaze, Serkan, Seizan, and Kaien. Or just murdered those names who all come together to form Raiden. This guy was nearly flattened when Bruticus collapsed a building on him, but it also had battles with Predaking, th this weird giant plant, remember that one? <laughs> Abominus and Galvatron himself. In the Train Wars novels, he was near obliterated by the nine great demon generals, which I'm gonna go into in the next video. The Magnificent Six was what Prowl, Jazz, Wheeljack, Sunstreaker, Inferno, and Stampede once called themselves in the Marvel comics, where a mission to take down sadistic Decepticon Steelhammer eventually led to them being tortured by a Decepticon called Megadeth. He killed Stampede before detonating a bomb that destroyed the Cybertronian region of Stanix. Years later, in a rematch with Megadeth, the five remaining members are forced to confront their inner demons about the whole thing and pummeled Megadeth to within an inch of his life before he killed himself rather than be taken alive. Okay, so Japan, right? It can be weird and fascinating and... Mm, but just, you know, Japan. Transformers Go Go, Starscream once stole Bumblebee's Energon, so he was like, I need to get stronger uh, to stop this from happening, stop getting bullied, right? So Alita 1 comes along and, oh, here's where it gets weird. Put him, Optimus, and herself through a hardcore training regime to get buff and shredded, and yep, they scared Starscream away with their sick muscle flexes. They were called the Muscle Autobots. Yeah, I would have gone with buff bots. The accelerators were Rapido, Scram, Turbofire, and Windbreaker. Windbreaker? <laughs> were a group of car bots whose engine blocks became weapons when they were in robot mode. In the Wings universe, they were engineered not on Cybertron, but on Earth, in cyber factories, merging Cybertronian tech and Earth tech. Their main opponents were the Decepticon Sky Scorchers, but in this comic, they took on Clench and his criminal syndicate. This guy, Scram, was part of another group, I don't think they had a name though, that took down any planets that aided the Decepticons. In the IDW, continuity, he would come up against Galvatron. Any Autobot's worst nightmare. And of course, he was hopelessly outmatched. But luckily for him, Galvatron was having a rebellious day and decided to leave him and the group of Autobots alive, just as a little fuck you to his master Nova Prime. Rapido, the leader of the group, was said to be quite a charming and clever bot. They make quite a big deal about him being Spanish too, often randomly throwing in like a colloquialism. Okay, gracias. I rolled off the production line in 1993. <laughs> 
<laughs> and after a battle outside the large Hadron Collider went south, he had to remind his fellow Autobots that he technically held the highest rank of any Autobot on Earth, as authorized by Optimus. He organized a counterattack though, and managed to stop the cons from getting control of the Hadron Collider. In Transformers Animated, we had the Ministry of Science, including Mainframe, Perceptor, and Wheeljack. And they gave us... ...is a prototype Autobot weapon of mass destruction. And quite possibly our last chance of defeating the Decepticons. Project Omega gave us the Omega Sentinels in Transformers Animated and were a mass-produced line of weapons of mass destruction. There were four smaller prototypes, one called Omega Spream, S-P-R-E-E-M, Spream standing for Strike Prototype Rapid Engagement and Elimination Module. And once the final lineup was complete, each of them was bonded to a character that's an important leader in other continuities. For example, Alpha Supreme was bonded to Primal Major, which is of course a reference to Optimus Primal. Zeta Supreme was bonded to Impactor Major, and so on and so forth. Then you had the Omega Guardians, who similarly were hugely powerful peacekeepers that safeguarded Cybertronian cities and treasures. The Decepticons found them to be huge thorns in their sides, but gradually eroded their numbers down to a mere few. The Omega Guardians were descended from the Dark Guardians that were enforcers for the Quintessons back when they ruled Cybertron. In the comics, the Omega Guardians were the spearhead for the Cybertronians' campaign to conquer Antilla, and they attacked with such ferocity that the rest of the galaxy would come to fear the Cybertronians. Later, in the days of the Cybertronian Senate, there were a few of these that came to be known as Omega Destructors that were sent out by the ruthless Zeta Prime to stamp out any rebellion against his governing body. The B team was not only Bumblebee's group from Robots in Disguise featuring Strongarm, Grinlock and all those guys who, you know, had to round up all of the Decepticons that escaped from that crash prison ship. But they were also a group from Transformers Legends that saw Bumblebee at the head of a group featuring Huffer, Gears and Beachcomber where they went up against a band of Insecticons. Then you had the Build team from 2001 Robots in Disguise. <laughs> A construction crew who were brilliant at building stuff, even having the engineering skills to put together something as complex as a space bridge, but they were absolutely terrible in combat. Four bots, Heavy Load, Wedge, High Tower, and this universe's incarnation of Grimlock could also combine into Landfill, which was quite a bit better in battle, being able to fight off both Scourge and Megatron. Again, I'm no expert on the Japanese continuities, but the Skid Squadron was another multiversal group. This time, where one version of Skids got what's called Dimension Slide Armor, giving him the ability to summon four other Skids from other dimensions. And in the Legends comics, he tried to get rid of all non-native Transformers from the Legends world. Stealth Mode. 2001 Robots in Disguise had the Spy Changers, a team of six special ops experts who specialized in stealth missions of, of covert espionage and special operations, and had special abilities such as invisibility, face shifting, and could drive up walls and shit. They weren't always the best of fighters though, due to their smaller than average proportions. Then there was the Autobot Brothers, who were some of Prime's most trusted soldiers, x brawn Prowl, and Sideburn, who had a literal supercar fetish. The only way I could feel any better than I do now is finding that little red sports car. Like, I'm not even joking, it was a problem. Megatron even once used it to bait him into a trap. And when Prime tried to save him, he got captured too. So it was a problem. Prowl is the usual pedantic by the book asshole and ex brawn This is a guy who loves to bicker with his brothers. They assisted Prime many times and even went up against the combined form of the commandos called Ruination. Team Prime was obviously the name of the guys from Transformers Prime who came to Earth and allied themselves with the US government and a few children to fight the Decepticons. They would later become the Beast Hunters as the Predacon threat re-emerged. The original lineup was Prime, B, Bulkhead, RC and Ratchet, but it would expand to include Wheeljack, Ultra Magnus, Smokescreen... Mm, am I missing any? Transform! Okay, one from Transformers Go was the Swordbot Samurai Team, a trio of bots capable of combining with each other in a variety of ways, with Kenzan turning into a police car, Jinbu into a jet, and Gano a fire truck. But there was also the Swordbot Shinobi Team, and same principle, except these guys had beast modes. There was Gekisomaru, who turned into a lion, Hishomaru, he was a bird, and Sensuimaru whose alt mode was a shark. Optimus turned into a train in this one. I'm gonna have to amputate. What? Team Athenia was another of Rodimus' crews, this one from Transformers Animated. Brawn was in this one, and as was Ironhide, Hotshot, and Red Alert. They battled the Decepticon Team Char, losing control of a space bridge to them. And in one of the comics, they fought a rock lord, 
that unbeknownst to them had been sent by their rivals team char to assess their strengths and weaknesses. My very own team? So here's a funny one. The rhyming Omicron fanboys from Energon who started hero worshipping Ironhide. So Prime thought he'd channel all of that fangirling energy and told Ironhide he could mold them into his own unit, imaginatively called Team Ironhide. They designed him his own logo and everything. And that's why you're the best. Better than the rest. And you've got zest. <laughs> Their rhymes are f***ing wicked. Unfortunately, the Omicron fanboys were pretty quickly cut down by Scorponok. The stealth team were from the Wings universe, being a subgroup of the Elite Guard, and put together by Magnum. Power Flash was the leader, Tap Out was the covert specialist, Rumbler was a mechanic, Sprocket was the pilot, and one mission in particular involved them locating and destroying one of Deathsaurus bases in the Cybertronian city of Gygax. And on another occasion, they were chasing a warlord called Gut Cruncher when they found a crystal that gave them extra strength and power but at the cost of their ability to transform. Two of the team were later killed when Bruticus attacked the Elite Guard's base of operations. The other two only survived because one of them accidentally fired a shot into the ceiling, which, which ended up trapping and therefore sheltering them. The Street Action Minicon team were from Transformers Animated and were created by Unicron long ago to serve as mindless, non-sentient tools to stoke conflict on Cybertron. That is until they ended up befriending these human kids. Grindor was the skateboard slash hovercraft. <sighs> Highwire was the bicycle slash dirt bike, and Shawshock was a moped slash four wheel all terrain vehicle. By the power of cholesterol, I will Technically, not Autobots because this show was kind of separate from the rest of the continuity, but pretty funny all the same are the Bot Bots. In this one, a bolt of Energon Lightning hits a shopping mall and brings to life a bunch of ordinary objects to create a whole load of mischievous mall mechanoids. You could mostly organize these based on the stores that they originated in. Stores, you know, like shops where people store stuff before they buy it. You know, what do you mean that didn't need explaining? What? Apart from the Lost Bots who come from the store's Lost and Found department. There were the Gamer Geeks, obviously from the video game store. There's Game Over, the controller, Chitter Click, the mouse, Snorg, the karaoke machine, and so on and so forth. There were the Shed Heads from a hardware store, including the ironically named Cobble Tooth, the Chainsaw, Nail Biter, who was a hammer. But there were also plant ones, like a Venus Flytrap one and the Mossy Rock. The Hunger Hubs, or Greaser Gang, are robotic junk food. There's Burgatron, Deuteroni, the slice of pizza. There's a Corn Dog. There's Waffle Netic, who's a waffle. And Holt Mess is a taco. The Science Alliance, they not only spent their time doing experiments, but also practicing music. They were like a, from a science education store, they, there was a telescope, there was a microscope, a Bunsen burner, and there was one called Data Dump, who was a computer. But there was some kind of weird climate change message in their app where they noticed the temperature in the mall was continuously rising, caused by the other bots never ending partying. The Swag Stylers were a group of fashion bots, and hilariously, the toilet troop who cleaned toilets. So they were made up of bots, including an air freshener, a toilet brush, a germ-phobic roll of toilet paper, another roll of toilet paper, which was like cheap and scratchy, <laughs> a literal pile of poop, and even a puddle of bath called Vomit Comet. The sugar shocks were what they sounded like. There was a cupcake, there was a lollipop, there was an ice cream sandwich called Freeze Witch. Oh, look at the little donut guy. He's got little chubby cheeks. And the jock squad were from the sports store. We like sports and we don't care who knows. With Dinger the baseball, Batsby the baseball bat. Wait, no, I said that weird. Dinger was the baseball and Batsby was the bat. Arctic Guzzle Rush. He was one of those sport bottles, you know the ones. The pet mob turned into stuff like an ant farm. What the hell? There was a dog poo pickup bag and the arcade renegades who were well, that one doesn't really need explaining that much, does it? There was a pinball machine, there was a slot token, there was one of those claw games, and so on. The 113th Battalion was a huge brigade of literally thousands of Autobots. Now, we don't know exactly how many, but we do know the Black Shadow, the insanely powerful Phase Sixer, killed over 3,000 of them by himself. All right, let's do some combiners. Now, I covered many of these in this here vid, so I won't spend too long on them, but let's start with the aerial bots. Originally rebuilt from some old abandoned shuttles, they were brought to life by Alpha Trion and Vector Sigma. And during their first adventure, their leader, Silverbolt, who was a sort of Concorde type plane, discovered that he was afraid of heights. His theory was that it was because he was originally built from a low altitude cargo shuttle. Air Raid was an F-15, whose speciality was set to be close quarters combat. Skydive was an F-16. 
he was the strategist of the group with a deep knowledge of military history. Then there was Slingshot, a Harrier jump jet whose vertical takeoff and landing capabilities would often come in useful. That was when he wasn't being a total jerk, that is. I say we're still better than any Autobot, or human for that matter. Then there was Fireflight, an F4 Phantom. It was kind of dreamy and absent-minded. And then there were non-regular members like Alpha Bravo, Powerglide, Balloon, who was apparently the first aerial bot, Air Razor, and Barrel Roll. These guys are rivals, deadly rivals, to the Stunticons. And just as they combined into Menasaur, the aerial bots combined into Superion. They were actually also in the Revenge of the Fallen video game. I would have loved to have seen the Bayverse version of Superion, wouldn't you? Their equivalent in the Unicron trilogy was the Air Team, which formed Superion Maximus. He was one of the four Guardian Combiners chosen to protect the Super Energon at the core of Cybertron. The Protector Bots were hotspot, first aid, streetwise, blades and groove, and they had their own headquarters in G1, separate from Autobot HQ. Don't know why, maybe they just refused to pay Optimus' rent, I don't know. Their most astonishing deed to me is still the fact that they completely destroyed Bruticus with a single shot from a tiny little gun. As their name suggested, they would go out of their way to get humans out of the line of fire, including shoving them in meat fridges when Megatron changed the orbit of the planet and it heated up because it got closer to the sun. There was clearly discord among the group about how involved they should be. For for example, this one time Hotspot wanted to take on the enemy but was overruled and the group had to save these pathetic humans from an erupting volcano. But First Aid was a devout pacifist. Now I never played the Revenge of the Fallen video game on the PS3, but apparently it had its own version of the Protector Bots too. These guys were a bunch of mass-produced Autobot body forms that I'm guessing were like the Vagicons. The Technobots! Yahoo! Then we've got the Technobots who were smart, like super smart, just smart, and saw Scattershot leading Strafe, Nose Cone, Lightspeed and Afterburner, but also sometimes Scrounge and Cybax. Who the f And of course, they could merge. MERGE! I am- ...to form Computron, and sometimes Betatron, who you would assume was a beta version of Computron, but really looks like Superion. I'm confused! They were famously made from parts of Unicron's brain by Grimlock when he was temporarily given super intellect. And in Grimgrams, whatever that may be, he thought of them as children and talked about getting them a cake on their birthday. Ah. Are you my father? The Chevy Autobots could be seen briefly in one of the many, 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 many Bayverse commercial tie-ins. And although we only see three here, there were like seven. They were called Avalanche, Avio, Cobalt, Equinox, Silverado, Impala, all after the models that they were trying to sell you. Apparently their speciality is code breaking and they had to defend the planet from mainframe. Yeah, I can't really explain that one either. There was one from 3H comics called the Children of Primus. That was a group whose individuals were drawn by Primus from many different realities and continuities to form an army led by Optimus Primal to counter Unicron's latest tactic of abducting Transformers from across space and time to harvest their sparks, using them to rebuild his body. It also included Apelink and many, 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 many more. The diplomatic corps sounds kind of boring, doesn't it? And their official remit was to persuade outside races to join the Autobot corps, but turns out it was one of Prowl's special operations outfits headed by Jazz. At least in the Dreamwave continuity it was. Prowl wanted them to be like the Wreckers, but less, you know, gung-ho and blow everything up -y. In IDW, Getaway and Skids were the operatives in question. One of their missions included apprehending Chief Justice Tyrest and socking him with a mind control device so they could make him do little pirouettes and go, I'm a naughty little cheese puff. In the Legends comic, Skylinks once headed a group called the Disaster Relief Team, who would help rebuild after the cataclysmic devastation of a Cybertronian battle. Ratchet was in their Hound, Trailbreaker, and Wheeljack, and they also combined to form Skyrain. Another one that probably shouldn't be on this list because A, not strictly Autobots, and B, they're toys. But the Knights of Unicron are pretty funny because they're a rock band. Optimus was on lead vocals, Soundwave did backup vocals, Megatron was on guitar, and Smooth Jazz get it, Smooth Jazz, was on Kitar, as well as Laserbeak and Ratbat. Now these guys carried on the band that Bumblebee founded in 1978, but had to leave because obviously he lost his voice. They had a bunch of Vagicons as roadies, and Starscream was their undoubtedly dodgy manager. RC was even Yoko Ono. There were even rumors of a support band called the Rockbots, made up of power cord and feedback, but I think these two never got out of the concept stage. One I've never talked about on my channel before is Transformers Rescue Bots. Astonishingly, this is now the longest running Transformers series ever, having overtaken G1. Anyway, it's aimed at younger audiences, so it's less about the Cybertronian War and more about helping out in emergency situations, and it centers around Rescue Force Sigma-17. 
who are Heatwave, Chase, Blades, and Boulder, but it also features a myriad of other cameos from the roster. But there was another group called Rescue Bots from Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, where Ratchet, Red Alert, Blades, Jetfire, Inferno, and Peacemaker combined with Prowl and RC to form a special version of Defensor, whose main aim was to protect the G.I. Joes. There was also the Rescue Patrol from Transformers Animated that was led by Fixit, as well as the Rescue Force, which was kind of an obscure one. They didn't even bother to give these guys names. Jumping back to the Marvel comics for a sec, the Project Prime team were in charge of making a new body for Optimus after he died. Basically, Fort Max managed to get Prime's mind on a floppy disk, then put together a task force to rebuild his body. And they did, but unfortunately, it blew up. Yeah. The Cybertron 7 were another from the Marvel comics. They were a rebel group fighting the Decepticons on Cybertron under the command of Perceptor. Among their adventures was the discovery of this space bridge that was alive. Well, when I say alive, this asshole of a Decepticon named Lord Straxus forced a scientist called Spanner to build him a space bridge and then ordered his troops to force integrate Spanner into it. Messed up! The Autobots that formed up the combiner Optimus Maximus, namely Optimus, Hot Rod, Sunstreak, and Mirage, Prowl, and Ironhide, were referred to as the Sentinels. The 13th Legion were a group of Autobots from Gen 1 that left the planet to settle on Antilla and lived there peacefully, becoming a thriving little community until an asteroid strike brought the deadly cosmic rust to their planetary shores and devastated their populace. Let's talk guns! Guns, big guns, because the trigger bots, Backstreet, Dogfight, and Override have hardly had easy lives. They're these three Autobots that have disproportionately large weapons. I know the feeling. They got enslaved by psychic vampires in the Marvel comics. One of them tried to take on Megatron by himself, and it's no surprise that this happened. Then in Regeneration 1, two of them succumbed to Scorponok's gene key device that turned Autobots into Decepticons and then helped the Decepticon build a larger scale version of the device in a plot to take over the whole planet. Then they were involved in the battle against Jaxus before having to fight a corrupted Fortress Maximus. And then they had to fight the insanely powerful Thunderwing, which if you've seen my video on the most powerful Decepticons, you'll know that was a death center. Sandstorm, Broadside, and Inferno formed the Advanced Surveillance Unit, and they had to deal with a pesky alien firebug that was starting fires all over the shop. Jesus Christ! And booted its ass to Mercury, where it found happiness juggling several flaming oranges. <laughs> Then, they were absorbed into the Wreckers to take on Galvatron. Many of this combined group didn't survive, including Sandstorm, and it was left to Broadside and Inferno to reunite the stragglers and reform what was left of the group, which would become known as the Survivors. Is it me, or did they look like they're saluting a passing dictator? Oh, you're not saluting? We have a rebel on our hands! There was a group called the Autobot Rebels from G1. They rose up against the Quintessens. They were led by a bot called A3, the young Alpha Trion, basically, who mysteriously disappeared on, on the eve of one of their most important attacks. Because he got sucked into the future, okay? So second in command, Beta had to take control. And despite all of the odds, go up against the fearsome Dark Guardian. But just as all seemed lost, A3, he came back! He had a plot twist! Now this is one that's pretty personal to me because it relates to my very first experience of Transformers comics. It was the Elite Flying Corps from Marvel Comics, and it was an outfit run directly by Optimus Prime, featuring Strafe, Dogfight, Skyfall, Doubleheader, and Dive Bomb, who was part of this one storyline where he secretly met up with this flying Decepticon on this planet far, far from the war to fight over the name Dive Bomb. Now, as far as I remember, he lost and had to switch his name to Swoop. But for me, this is a very fond memory. I vividly remember finding a faded old copy of this in my grandma's attic. I don't know how it got there. I don't know who it belonged to. Somehow doubt it was my nan's. Now, this thing came out in like 87 or something like that. So it had obviously been sitting there several years as if just waiting for me, you know? And the funny thing is, I think I still have it somewhere. So I like to think of it possibly sitting in my own attic, waiting for the next generation to come along, you know? Anyway, the Lightformers were another party of two from the Marvel comics who shared a love of big artillery and gun turrets. Deftwing was one, Iron Fist the other. <laughs> Infantry Unit P-21 was a team dedicated to searching for Energon on Earth. We can assume there were at least 21 of these guys, and, and this team was assigned to Central Asia. Sadly for them, the Decepticons got hold of them, used one of them to transmit a message telling the Autobots they'd found Energon, thus luring them into a deadly trap. Then the cons 
wiped out every last one of them. Let's talk about the mini cassettes, the Autobot ones. On Earth, at least, these guys transform into analog cassette tapes that fit tidily into Blaster's chest compartment. And he's had like 10 of these over the years. Like in Transformers the movie, he shot out Ramhorn, Steel Jaw, Rewind, and Eject. But he's also had Flipside's Grand Slam, who could apparently combine with Rain Dance to combine into Slam Dance, Night Stalker, Sundor, Playback, Stripes, Rosanna, Rewind, and the W cassette boss. Those. In some continuities, I think Prime was one of these. The bots that carried these cassette bots were known as Deployers. But that's another kind of faction. In the Marvel continuity, Blaster had a brother called Toaster. And instead of ejecting cassettes, he'd eject toast. <laughs> oh, and he was part of a faction called the Crusticons. As in crust, you know, crust bread, crust. <laughs> Next on the list, we got the Pretenders, the Cybertronians' attempt to make bots that would blend seamlessly in with... Well, fuck knows what they were trying to blend in with. Humans that had been inflated like a balloon, maybe? I don't know. Originally created by Scorponok in the Marvel comics, they may have even been created earlier by Longtooth and Thunderwing in a bygone era of Cybertron. IDW ran with this idea too, having Decepticon Thunderwing using living tissue painfully culled from live and quite likely unwilling subjects to create a powerful and still living symbiotic carapace. The goal of this technology was to allow Transformers to survive an impending environmental collapse on their home planet Cybertron. And even Megatron rejected this concept as unnatural and repulsive. The Sparkbots were fizzle, guzzle, and sizzle. Not to be confused with the Kiss Player's Sparkbots, which I never want to think about again. They could each unleash a torrent of flames from their vehicle forms. Next up, the Kiss Player's Sparkbots. Ah! Remove your heads. Let's Talk headmasters. No, not that asshole who kicked me out of school, but the symbiotic relationship between human and Cybertronian that takes the squishy Humi, folds them up in a variety of inexplicable ways, and gives them super strength, armor, and loads of other, you know, benefit. And the bot gets quicker reactions, better targeting, and stuff like that. But it's not really a faction as both Autobots and Decepticons have them. Likewise for Target Masters, Titan Masters, Power Masters, but the Brain Masters, from what I gather, not knowing that much about the Japanese continuities, are elite members of the Galactic Defense Force so maybe they do qualify. Anyway, the four Brain Masters are Star Saber, Blacker, Laster, and Braver. Now, these guys did most of the heavy lifting against the cons while they were training. The next guy's on the list. So the multi-force from Transformers Victory was mostly seen as Dash Tacker, Mac Tackle, and their leader Wingwaver. So these three could not only combine into Land Cross, but also split into two bots each. Dash Tacker into Dash and Tacker, Mac Tackle into Mac and Tackle, Wingwaver into Wing and Waver. One thing that made these guys interesting was that each one could draw on the power of an element. Wind, fire, earth, moon, that kind of shit, which they could draw on in this mode to fuel their special attack. Wingwaver had a Typhoon attack called Multi-Dead Hurricane, Dash Tacker had the Multi-Turbo Fire attack, and Mac Tackle had the Multi-Spin Tornado, which they used in their fights against their main rivals, the Dino Force. Wake up! The Torchbearers are a faction from Cybertronian colony Caminus, who serve their High Priestess called the Mistress of Flame, as peacekeepers and protectors of Cybertronian artifacts and relics, and generally just upholding the ways of Solus Prime. It's an ancient order of specifically six members, each of which have to don the colors and undergo rigorous training that makes them hard as nails. The lineup that we know best is led by Pyromagna, and consists of Jumpstream, Dustup, Stormclash, Skyburst, and Rust Dust, and they're also known by the name Rust Renegade of course they combine into Victorion. Oh, here they come, the Substitute Autobots. Um, and they were pretty funny, you know, but as an effective fighting force, they sucked ass. Yo, Snarl! <laughs> yeah, they were basically all that was left, like Scrapper, Snarl, Retgar. They all came together under the leadership of not annoying at all human Sari Sumdak and came into being when the rest of the Autobots were under the control of Soundwave. When challenged by a brainwashed Optimus, Cover me! You got it! <laughs> he did not just do that. Scrapper tried to fight the evil by throwing a bunch of snowballs. Rekgar pulls out. What is that even a stick? Wreck the bot with strings of garbage. Fa -la 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 -la. And they actually managed to get the upper hand, but only because Soundwave wasn't able to control all of the Autobots at once. And eventually Prowl came in, threw a bunch of shurikens, Soundwave lost his axe, and the whole thing ended with Optimus and Soundwave having this cool guitar off. And I was like, fuck yeah! <laughs> That was awesome! Substitute Autobot team, no, they suck. Optimus Prime Super Mode! Our 
The Prime Force were a team of drones from Energon that come out of Optimus's trailer and then combine or power link with him so that he can form his super mode. It's explained in the comics that Prime was able to access the power of Sig Omega and somehow use that to develop the spark of combination and then use the Prime Force, who had just called Optimus 1, Optimus 2, Optimus 3, and Optimus 4, to fend off Unicron's four horsemen. All right, let's get our speedrunning shoes on again because there are a boatload of Minicons. Luckily, they weren't all Autobots, though. A lot of them were neutral. We've got the land military Minicon team, the air military Minicon team, the emergency Minicon, the hazard Minicon team, the race Minicon team, the sonic assault Minicon team, the street speed Minicon team, the caretaker Minicons, the cyclone Minicons, exploration Minicon team, recon Minicon team, the littoral recon Minicon team, street speed Minicon team, the off-road Minicon team, <laughs> even have their own Minicon Council of Sages, led by this guy. His name's Boobface. No, just making sure you're still paying attention. His name's Anti-Blaze, who tried to lead him to a self-sufficient planet in another star system until this bastard called Thrust came along and was like, no, no peace for you, fuckos, and destroyed all their ships and started a whole Minicon Civil War. It was the whole thing. The race Minicon team, also from Energon, would combine to form the Sky Boom Shield, one of the trifecta of astonishingly powerful weapons, including the Star Saber, made up of the Air Defense Minicon team, and the Requiem Blaster, made up of the space minicon team. Optimus's team in Transformers Animated was referred to as the All-Stars. Did you know that? Don't think I knew that. Team Rodimus could refer to the crew that Hot Rod assembled on a ship called the Lost Light that went on a search for the Knights of Cybertron, or it could refer to a group from Energon who became disenchanted with the war before leaving to wander the galaxy. You know, like Kane in Kung Fu. Walk from place to place, meet people, get in adventures. Most of them would settle on planet Omnitron and eventually evolve into the Omnicons, who were small Transformers, not as small as Minicons though, who could convert raw Energon into armaments and tools. Many share a body type, but they're not not actually drones as they do have consciousness and they include the sky blast strong arm and you know quite a few others female autobots excellent these days when you think female transformers you don't necessarily think about a faction necessarily do you they're just other transformers ones that happen to be girls but there was a stage where there weren't any and it wasn't until the G1 ep called The Search for Alpha Trion, which predated even RC's first appearance in Transformers the movie, that we saw them as a resistance group sneaking into Shockwave's lab to try and steal Energon. They were thought dead, like hit by a missile, during the launch of the Ark, and God knows where they'd been until this moment. But led by Alita One, they were Firestar, Chromia, and Moonraiser. But in other media, the gang, sometimes also known as the Shield of Solus, had also included Greenlight, Lancer, and RC, and in certain universes, five of those can combine into Orthia. One that superseded the Autobot faction altogether is the Maximals that came into being because of the societal paradigm shift known as the Great Upgrade, which saw the Cybertronians adopting smaller body stars in an effort to save Energon after the Great War. Their new bodies weren't just smaller, but semi-organic, often having real fur and feathers, and also being able to absorb radiation that would otherwise be harmful to their robot modes. In certain continuities, they had their own planet, Eucaris, which I guess would have been colonized by Onyx Prime. There were also different types of Maximals, including the Fusors, where by which their beast modes were a fudge together of two different animals, the Transmetals, where they got more mechanical parts on their beast modes and more beast attributes on their robot modes, and also sometimes what they'd refer to as a transport mode. Air Cheetors coming in! Plus shiny. The Transmetals 2, which saw them getting even weirder and more freakish, and occasionally things like telekinesis, and the Techno Organics, which still give me nightmares to this day. There's been a number of Auto Troopers over the years. Yes? The Kiss Players ones? Uh. The Auto Troopers were also a peacekeeping or police force from Transformers Animated, as well as the Autobot equivalent of Vacons in the Transformers universe. They were also these Coneheads, valiant and noble Decepticons from Shattered Glass. Remember those toys where you'd like pull this ripcord and then this rotor, like this helicopter spinny thing, would fly off and your mum was always trying to stop you from firing it at your sister or whatever? It's not a weapon, she'd say. Well, actually, mum! The rotor force would use them as weapons. Oh, look at this guy, the rotor's stuck in his belly! Originally built by the Decepticons, with two of them, Leadfoot and Manta Ray, switching to the Autobots. The IDW incarnations of these characters didn't last very long. One got killed by Galvatron, the other one got killed by Nemesis. The Laser Rods were Electro and Volt. These guys were originally Decepticons too, that were designed by Bludgeon. And I think they were these carbots that wielded these kind of energy swords, these kind of lightsaber type things. The color changers were Drench and a bot called Gobots, who, only when they came into contact with Watermind, chameleon their s*** and become a whole different color. Why? 
Gobots was KIA and Drench was killed by Nemesis Prime. Oh, you mean changing colours didn't help? Ah, uh, shit shot is coming to rip our heads off and do unholy things with our money, sir! Don't worry, man. Prepare to change colours! Yes, sir! Then what, sir? Pretty colours, yes. The Action Masters use a special fuel called Nucleon that made them just more awesome in every way, basically. But... Stop, Stop them, them, them transforming transform together. together. Who had this idea, man? You know, no... <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the theme song? Robots walking around. All right, you guys, let's leave that there for now. Thank you for watching this far into the video. I know it's been a long one. Let me know if I've forgotten any factions down below, as well as liking and subscribing for that Decepticon vid. And remember that I'm putting my own Autobot faction together very soon in the membership section. So all that considered, let me invite you to get out of my head. And I will see you very soon for the next one. Cheerio, bye.